Mark Scrimshire and Jeannie Pinder, who are all doing pretty amazing things in healthcare. So I know you're all finishing up your lunch, so grab your coffee, come have a seat, and they're going to go through a comedy of errors a, and maybe a some comedy of errors in healthcare. Now I'm going to step back, and all you patients. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Okay, for the average human, commonly called a patient, interacting with the healthcare system can feel like being in a Monty Python sketch written by an absurdist playwright with zero comedy sense. In this session, four players who know patient experience and the healthcare system inside and out will act out this absurdity and then offer up solutions. I'm Casey Quinlan, a writer and health policy wonk who's an open science <coughs> and open data activist. Joining me are Mandy Bishop, Hi, I'm Andy Bishop. I'm the Chief Evangelist, CEO, and co-founder of Aloha Health. And Mark Scrimshire. Hi there, you've heard enough from me already today. <laughs> and Jeannie Pinder. I'm the founder and CEO of clearhealthcosts.com. We're a journalism startup founded out of New York City, bringing transparency to the healthcare marketplace by telling people what stuff costs. All right, so our dramatis personae Happy. for this today are first, we have Jeannie, Jeannie playing payer, so I'm going to hand this down. She gets both a green eye shade and a sound effect. Next, yep, there we go. Next, we have Mark playing the doctor with a plague mask. Oh. Mandy's playing the patient. She's a real person, so she doesn't get to wear a hat or have to wear a hat. And then I, Oh, go ahead and guess. I'm the IT department. <laughs> I, too, have a sound effect. And it's not comedy unless you have a rubber chicken, meet Chuck. All right, these are all true stories. Here we go. First, the labrum tear. I'm here for my hip surgery for the labrum tear, Dr. Scrimshire. Thank you so much. Everyone says you're the best surgeon. I don't know where they got that from. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm doing soul, uh, shoulder surgery. Uh, that's what it says here on the chart. But my shoulder's not the problem. It's my hip. I, I, I can't do surgery on your hip. It's not authorized. What's authorized is the shoulder. Sorry. They already authorized it all. Plus, I'm stripped down and on a gurney, theoretically speaking. My butt's hanging out of my gown and they have hooked up the IV, and they're about to start the anesthetic. So, so call the insurance company. They'll figure it out. <laughs> the last time I called the insurance company, I was on hold for two hours on two separate occasions. And once I finally found the last fax machine in the library that still worked and sent them all the paperwork, the insurance company said it was authorized to do the surgery on my hip. No, no. Uh, still says shoulder here, so do you want hip, do you want sh shoulder surgery? Oh, hell on. no, I'm out of here. Two days later. Ring. But you can't do surgery on my shoulder. It's not injured. It says here that it's the shoulder. That's what we're operating on. If you want hip surgery, that will be elective, and you'll have to pay. It's my hip that's injured. I have had PT on my hip for a year. I don't understand. It's hip surgery, not shoulder surgery. Our IT, guy, uh, <laughs> Our IT guys say that they can change the diagnosis if you're sure that's what the problem is. Seriously? Who would know better than me? It is absolutely my hip for a year. It's been my hip. It is not my shoulder. Okay, here's our IT guy. We cannot change a diagnosis. That would be fraud. But it was wrong in the first place. The doctor is never wrong. I am getting homicidal. We can change it, but we need to work on our GitHub fork. Also, the XML is faulty in this report, and we're switching from Epic to Cerner as our EMR. And then when we get done switching to Cerner as our EMR, the hospital system has committed to a new EMR from a Silicon Valley startup that will not only keep our records, do end-to-end real-time reporting, and certify us for macro and 
CMS, CMS is ACO stipulations, but also make us martinis and take out the garbage. Also, HIPAA, compliant, Ruby on Rails, Python, and Node.js. So what you're saying is you're going to operate on my shoulder instead of on my hip because a computer says so. Shoulder. <laughs> Medications for AFib. Well, the test results are in, and they confirm that you've got uh, atrial fibrillation. Okay. After my last appointment, I did some reading on AFib, and I see how that made me feel like I had a, a frog in my chest. I almost started calling my heart Kermit. I read that there are medications that can help it, but which one should I try? Well, Kermit's very nice, but uh, we might have to try a few before we find the right mix. We want to have anticoagulants and heart rate and rhythm meds to keep your condition controlled. And we also need to make sure that whatever you prescribe is on my health plan and it's covered, right? This is on the list of covered drugs? Uh, right. Well, let's start with Xarelto as an anticoagulant. Not a covered drug. See, this is why I brought that up. How about if we did some of that Pharma, pharmaco, ph pharmacogenomics, pharmacogenomic testing that I've read about. Maybe that'll help with figuring out the right drug mix. Sure, we can try that. Let, let's see, where is that in the workflow? Orders, labs, 81225. Not a covered service. 81227. Not a covered service. Whoa. Whoa. All right. So, how much would the testing be <coughs> if I just paid cash out of pocket? Um, I, I don't know. Let's see if that's in here. Does not compute. Proprietary information. Proprietary information. Whoa. What am I supposed to do? I guess I got to make friends with Kermit the Heart. The MRI. I'm here for the MRI that my doctor ordered. How much is it going to cost? I have no idea. Please give me your credit card first. Payment will be required before service. Dude, I just had to fly to New York to get here. You think I'm going to give you my credit card without knowing whether or not I'm going to go over the limit? Come on now. Why would I give you my credit card if you can't tell me how much it's going to cost? Is this going to be $300, $500, $6,000, $12,000? $12, You'll have to ask your insurance company. We don't know any of that. Okay. The insurance company told me that this was authorized. It took three days, four hours on hold, six taxes and three customer service reps, but I got it authorized by the insurer. Oh, and my back hurts. I need the MRI now. Did you ask them how much it would cost? They said to ask you. Uh, sorry, no credit card, no service. I have lived in three other countries. This would never have happened in any of them. Two days later. Whoa. Got a patient here who says she wants to know what something will cost in advance. <laughs> we could do that, but it would be wrong. Well, we actually could do that, payer dude. The data's right here. But that's proprietary business information. We channeled Walmart negotiators to make sure we paid as little as possible to imaging centers so we could keep as much cash as possible. But that data's right here. Why can't we serve it up in the EHR workflow? It'd be easy. We just attach a dollar value to your CPT codes and... What are you, some kind of socialist? <laughs> what about shareholder value? What about me? No, what about me? All right, and now we're going to talk like real humans here. And first up, we're going to let Mandy hold forth on a topic close to her heart. <laughs> 
Okay, so we're all here pitching healthcare technology innovations, right? We understand that we talk about healthcare transformation, we talk about the solutions to these problems as if they are technology-driven solutions and as if the problem is technology, but it really isn't. It's a process problem, it's a people problem, this is a systemic issue that comes from the fact that healthcare has a what's in it for me complex. Unless you can answer what's in it for me for all the actors in the healthcare system from a process and people perspective, we're not going to solve these problems and we're gonna continue to come back to the tech. And next up we have Jeannie. Uh, the basic problem here is that the patient is the last person in the value chain. We have to turn that around and make the patient come first. That means that a lot of people in this room and a lot of people outside of this room are gonna need to give up some of their control and cede that control to patients. Otherwise, we're gonna wind up with the situation that we have now. <coughs> people are outraged. People can't afford treatment. People file suits. People die because they can't afford treatment. Enough is enough. Amen, and I have a short wish list. I would like to see cost information available in the EHR at the point of care for every patient in every doctor's office, every hospital, every clinic, everywhere. I'd like to see cost information available in the clear on any CPT code via payer with a simple zip code search. And I would like to see cost information posted by providers, the cash price for their services on their website and on the walls of their clinic. Simple re request. Mark, do you have anything to add here? Well, I, I've said for a long time, it, we're expecting patients to make life and death decisions without information. That's called guessing. All right, and now we will give you a vision of Nirvana. Nirvana, the labrum tear. I'm here for my hip surgery, doctor, for my labrum tear. Thank you so much. Everyone says that you are the best surgeon. Whoops. It says here it's shoulder surgery. I can fix that right here on your chart, and I can also fix your hip. Changing soldier re shoulder repair to labor and repair, are you sure? Yes, labor and repair. Confirmed. We've received and processed this claim and we've paid the surgeon, the hospital, and the whole rehab crew. You'd already met your deductible this year, so your copay is 500 for the whole shoot and match. Thank you, doctor. Why is this only a comedy sketch? Let's make this real. It really could be that simple. Let's work together in the immortal words of Jean-Luc Picard, let's make it so. Last word. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> now we got to go get serious again, but we thought we'd give you a little comedy break. <laughs> and oh, by the way, we came in two minutes under time. Did you pick the right girl for your timer or what? <laughs>